started talking about candlesticks and candlestick math. Now, candlestick math is sometimes referred to as blending or candlestick blending. Either one is exactly the same. It's how you combine two or more candles into a larger candle that will tell you more about what the market is doing. Now, in tonight's class, I'm going to share with you a couple of pre-prepared presentations I've got for you um, because they're, they're graphic presentations, visual creative presentations. If you'd like to see these at a later time, if you go to YouTube and look for the channel called Trading Education, and then just look under the playlist for candlesticks. Also, if you notice on your screen, I've put together two handouts for you. The one that's called Presentation YouTube Link, that's the link I was just talking about that'll take you directly over to the YouTube playlist. Also, I've given you the Introduction to Technical Analysis ebook from investing.com. It is an extensive research and resource for you to have and use at your convenience when you want to understand more about technical analysis. It is a great research tool. It's not an eight page ebook, it's a very long ebook covering the entire subject of technical analysis. You don't have to do anything for it, there's no charge for it. It's in that download button, there's no registration, there's no anything. Just click the download button, it's on your computer, and you can keep it and use it as you wish but it's only available in the live class. Now, also in tonight's class, I'm going to be sometimes saying the Euro, the Yen. I might say Facebook, I might say Google, I might say Tesla, I might say FTSE, I might say you know, gold or oil. I'm just using these as examples because it gets very, very boring saying security, security, security. But the concepts we're talking about tonight work on any asset that you're putting on a chart that you're using candlesticks for. I also intermix the terms investing and trading. Now, most of us here are traders. Okay, We're looking at short-term positions. Okay. We know what the difference is, but it gets very, very boring and monotonous saying trading, 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 trading. So I mix up the terms investing and trading, but we know the difference. So understanding candlestick patterns goes far beyond remember and recognizing certain formations. Now what happens is a lot of us get so confused with all these different weird names for candles. You know, we have the doji, we have the hanging hammer, we have the hanging man, we have the we have um, tweezers, we have three black crows, three white soldiers. We have Hammurabi's, you know, we have so many names for so many things that we get lost and we just don't even use candlesticks correctly and we just forget about it. Okay. Using candlestick math is a great way to use candlesticks without having to know any of the names or the positions or the patterns. So many books have been written about candlestick patterns featuring hundreds of different formations that supposedly provide secret information about what is going to happen next. Truth be told, it will make no difference to your trading performance whether you know what the concealing baby shallow, the three black crows or the unique three rivers bottom patterns are. What really matters is that you understand what the candlestick in front of you is trying to tell you about price structure trend strength, buyer and seller dynamics, and the likely path of future price movements. So remember, there are four elements of a candlestick. Step one is we have the candlestick war. Before we get started in the actual elements of candlesticks, it's important that you are in the right mindset. So let's think about price movement like a war between the bulls and the bears. Every candlestick is a single battle in an effort of, to win the overall war. And the five elements of the candlestick tell us who's ahead, who is pulling back, who is in control, and who has a better chance of winning the next battle. 
Now, step two is all about context. It's crucial to understand that candlesticks cannot be observed alone in a vacuum. A candlestick always must be analyzed in the context of what has happened in the past. So whenever we try to analyze a candlestick or formation, we need to ask ourselves a question. Is the size changing meaningfully or not? Is the current candlestick larger or smaller than previous ones? Is the change happening during an inactive trading period? For example, candlesticks on the Euro Forex pair trend to shrink in size during the quieter Asian session. Or like gold, candlesticks would be very, very small after the gold markets close in the US before the Asian markets open. If you're looking at an individual stock, if you're looking at something traded on the FTSE, that candlestick is gonna be very, very small until the London markets open. Okay. Or even if you're looking at something like Bitcoin that's traded 24 seven, in the middle of the night, you're gonna expect smaller candles. So you have to look at it in the context of what time or what's going on. So the first thing we wanna know, look at candles is the size of the body. And this is important whether you're using just a candlestick, basic candlestick chart, whether you're using candlestick patterns or you're gonna use candlestick math. The candle body is the great starting point because it contains lots of information. A long body is showing strength. When bodies become larger, it shows an increase in momentum. When bodies become smaller, it shows slower momentum. The body shows how far price has traveled over the duration of that one candle. So if we're looking at a 15 minute candle, it's the price, the duration, or how far price traveled in that 15 minute period. If you're looking at a one hour candle, it's how far price traveled in that one hour. Two, element two is the wicks. Wicks can show the volatility of price movement. Larger wicks show that price has moved a lot during the duration of the candle, but got rejected. When candle wicks become larger, it shows an increase in volatility. This often happens after long trending phases before a major reversal pattern or at a major support or resistance level. The shadow on top of the candlestick or the wick represents the seller's in control of the market. A shadow at the bottom of the candlestick represents buyers in control of the market. Now, we want to look at the ratio between the wicks and the candles. So now we can start to slowly put it together. Do you see longer wicks or longer bodies? In higher momentum trends, you can often see long bodies with small wicks. When uncertainty rises, the volatility picks up and bodies become smaller while wicks become larger. A large shadow on top of a body of a candlestick represents significant selling and is considered to be a bearish signal even if the body of the candlestick is green in color. Why? It sounds like it's upside down. But what it means is if the bulls push price all the way up to that new high but were unable to sustain that high. And a price came back down and formed that, to form that body of the candle. So it was a bearish signal because the bulls could not sustain that high that they had reached. Then the last element is an extension of the previous. Can you see a long wick with the body of an opposite color? This is often showing rejection. When you have a small body in the middle of a candle with long wicks, it means indecision. So remember, it's a continuous battle between the bulls and the bears or a tug of war. So if you know what a tug of war is and you got five guys on one side of the river and five girls on the other side of the river and they're pulling back and forth and they tug and the first guy falls in the river but gets up and he holds his rope and then they tug back and two girls fall in the river and they tug back and they get stuck and, you know, 
at the end, they're both where they started. So what you had is you, the one guy fell in for him, the upper wick, the two girls fell in for him, the lower wick. But overall, they ended up at the end of this battle when lunch was called, both all on the both sides of the river. Okay. It's this battle that we get from the candles, the body, and the wicks. Now, this gives us lots of candlesticks. So before we go over and try to blend them, we have to understand a little bit more about candles. So I'm going to share with you a little bit, a little presentation on, to get you ready to understand what a blended candle is. And then from there, we're gonna go on and start talking about candlestick math. Now, the core of this strategy relies on the concept of momentum loss shown through candle sizes and shapes, which is a very powerful price action technique. Here we have the Kiwi dollar. So if you've watched our other videos, we always want to identify key levels first. And as you can see, we have a level of support here where price hit and reversed from. And now we are back here again. Now, here's a very key point you need to know in order to spot high probability reversal trades. We want to see candles getting smaller and smaller as they approach a level of support or resistance because it shows that price is losing momentum. Very key point. You want price to be losing momentum and slowing down as it approaches key levels. Now, as price approaches this level of support, Look at how the candles behave. As you can see, we have a big candle, followed by a smaller candle, followed by an even smaller candle, another smaller candle, and then a smaller long wick candle rejecting support. And then finally, an even smaller green candle that is also a doji and also an inside bar, which is a reversal candle. And this results in a bounce upwards. So I'll show you this again on another pair. Here we have the Aussie dollar. This is a key level of support. As you can see from when price got here last, it hit and reversed upwards. So as price approaches this level again, we have a big candle, then a smaller candle, an even smaller candle, which is also rejecting support. And then we have this beautiful green long wick candle rejecting support. And then followed by another great inside bar candle rejecting support as well. And as you can see, price bounced upwards, which would have presented a great trade opportunity through the intraday timeframes. So when approaching support, what these smaller and smaller candles show is that the sellers and people shorting the market are losing steam, meaning some sellers might be taking profit as they notice this level of support, which causes these smaller candles. So let's jump to another example. Here's the Kiwi Yen. As you can see, we have a double top here before price tanked down, making this a key level of resistance. Now, as price approaches this level of resistance again, look at how the candles start acting. We have a big candle followed by a smaller candle, followed by a smaller red hanging candle, another hanging candle, and then a candle where the wick is rejecting this level of resistance before dropping down, which was another great trade opportunity. All of that sounded simple, but everybody says, how do I see this? How do I realize it? What do I, you know, what am, you know, you want some type of an easy way to put these candles together to understand what they're doing. Because in reality, it's easy to pick them when it's already happened, but seeing them as they're developing is a little bit more difficult. And then translating them into something that makes sense and, a, and an easy trading decision. Well, we can do this by, instead of looking for all those red candles and looking for all those, we can do this by what we call blended candles. When two single candlesticks lines are combined, the meaning on the chart can become more significant. You'll get an even sharper view of the psychology of the markets and the potential for a market reversal or a continuation. Blended candles go hand in hand with multiple time frame analysis, 
which is a skill you need to, to better identify the overall trend for the market and generate rock solid entry and exit points. Candlestick patterns are made up of one or more candlesticks, and these can be blended together to form one candlestick. So when you saw that little pattern in the, in the of all the reds or all the greens, well, we could just take all of those candles, the reds and the greens next to each other, whether they're bigger or smaller, and put them all together. When we put them all together, without having to look at them individually, by simply drawing lines and adding them together, we can then make an easier decision. We don't have to look at each one of those little patterns. So the first is we take the open of the first candlestick when we start to see an uptrend or a downtrend happen. Then we take the close of that last candlestick and we take the highest point it's reached and the lowest points it's reached. We put them, draw lines through them. And I'm gonna show you this in a presentation in a minute. So in other words, we take, here we have two candles. We would take the open of the first candle. We would take the lowest point of these two candles. We would take the highest point of these two candles. And we would take the, the, the close of the last candle. And what this does is when we add them together, we actually form a new candle of these two that has this short wick, this long wick, and this small body. Okay. Because the open was higher than the close, we would have a bearish candle. Okay. Well, two time frames or two candlesticks, all right, but we could do this with four candles. We could do it with six candles. And then it gives us an overall view of what the entire market is doing over that entire time period to suggest to you what direction you could trade or if there's a trading potential. So let me show you an example so it's easier to follow. And then we're gonna go on to the mathematics of adding these all together. Ways to use candlestick patterns in trading. So candlesticks by themselves, if you're to strip off everything from the chart, all the indicators that you use and all the other stuff that's on there and just look at price action, whether it's a five minute chart, a 10,000 tick chart, whatever you wanna use, as long as the candlesticks have a variable open, high, low, and close, you can use them just to confirm your position or your direction on a trade. And they can actually tell you a huge amount of information just looking at the candlesticks. So taking a look at the candlesticks, there's a couple different ways you can look at them. Yes, you can use patterns like dojis and haramis and all these different candlestick patterns, but in reality, if you break it down and you look at the candlestick patterns themselves, it really comes down to looking at candlesticks in basically two different ways. You either have a trending candle or a non-trending candle. And that's really all you have. Yes, if you combine a couple of them, you can have, you know, uh, ranges of consolidation or, you know, a few different areas like that. But in reality, looking at candlestick patterns, they're either trending or non-trending candles. And that's really all there are. Uh, you know, you can add whatever fancy name you want on them, um, but it's not necessarily the name of the candlestick that makes it important, more so where, you know, the open, high, low, and closes end up on those uh, actual candles. So taking a look at a couple examples here of candlestick patterns, you really want to find when you're getting into a position, whether it's long or short, you want a candlestick that confirms your direction. So if you're looking to get short, you want a bearish confirmation candle, or if you're looking to get long, you want a bullish confirmation candle. You don't want to go long against a bearish confirmation candle because that doesn't make any sense. So as an example, looking back a little bit earlier here on crude oil, we can see a few things happened here. Uh, you know, we had this little bit of a sell-off that kind of came down and brought prices a little bit lower here, where then prices were picked back up off of these lows. And there's a lot of clues that this was going to happen. Uh, along the way down, when we started reaching into these highs here, we had a lot of wicks on the highs. And we could see that every time the bulls started coming in and really trying to drive price higher, it was rejected. 
Now, along with that, in this area up at the top here, we also had a lot of wicks at the lows. And that gives us another big heads up that this is more just kind of a, a consolidation area. We're not really trending. Uh, in reality, we're not really going anywhere as of yet. But if we look at this area here and we zoom in a little bit on it here, we can do a couple things with this. Let me get my crosshair out of the way. There we go. So we can do a few things with this area. Now, we moved into this consolidation area pretty much after this candle formed. And from there, we just basically chopped around for a little while. Now, what we can do with this area is called candlestick math. And you can crunch these candlesticks together to try to figure out in the long term how this actually looks. And the way to do that is just to simply add up the beginning point and the end point and just combine them into one big candlestick. So as an example, the open was right here on that bullish candle that came across. The close, when we started actually breaking out of this consolidation area, was really this one right here, was that candle. You could also argue that candle, uh, even this candle down here if you wanted to. Uh, but really, the first candle that really dug out of this consolidation and stuck was this one right there. So what we'll do is we'll use that candle's close, and we'll just draw a box from that close to our open line. And now we've got the body of the candle. So if you were to fill this in with, say, red, because the open and the close, uh, the way that this actually trended in direction, is a bearish candle. So this whole inside of this candle will just be a big red candle right here. So we'll just fill that in with red to make it easier there. Now, along with that, uh, looking at the overall move itself, we also have wicks, right? Candlesticks have highs, lows, opens, and closes. So we need to measure the highs as well. So we'll go from the middle of it, and we'll just go up to the high point of the wick, which happened back there. So that's the wick high. And if we look on the lows, it was really just that one low down there. So we can just draw a wick to the lows down there. And now what we're left with, if we zoom out a little bit, is a bearish candle. Yes, this area was a full area of consolidation, but the tendency of that entire area or direction was bearish. And that gave us a big heads up that we should expect to see price react similarly to the fact that we didn't really have a whole lot of wick on the bottom, a lot of wick on the top, and we're seeing rejection from the sellers at these highs. We should see price fall off from that location. So yes, even though this whole area was an area of consolidation, we could see that ahead of time, we would expect prices to fall more so than rise. Now, as we fell down here, what did we start to see? We had a couple bearish trending candles. And what I mean by bearish trending candles is something like this, where there's not really a lot of wick. Uh, if you're gonna have wick, it'd, much be, it'd be preferred to be on the top side uh, for a bearish candle. And you don't wanna see much wick on the lows because it's a bearish candle. We wanna see it close as close to possible in the lows. Uh, a perfect example of this is this candle right there. We have absolutely no wick on the lows, a little bit of wick on the highs, and we closed right down at the bottom. So that's a perfect bearish candle. And that's a trending candle because we closed towards the lows. An example of a non-trending candle would be something like this, where we've got a decent amount of wick at the top, a large amount of wick at the bottom. Yes, we did close bearish. Uh, there was a bearish tendency to this move, but it's really just a bearish non-trending candle, just an area of consolidation, maybe a little bit of profit taking, but that's about it. There's not really any decisiveness in those moves. And then as we started to fall again, we followed that up with a bearish continuation candle and then a doji. So more indecision, more confusion. And we started to break down to these lows again. What did we have? We have more indecision. This is basically just a giant spinning top or a, a big doji, you know, big wick on the bottom, big wick on the top, not really giving us a lot of direction. And the same goes for that candle, that candle, that candle, that candle, that candle. We can see that there's a lot of indecision at these lows. And every time the buyers or the sellers come in, we're really not getting a whole lot. So we can use that to give us kind of a heads up because the following candle that really broke out of that range, look at that bullish trending candle. No wick on the lows, no wick on the highs, fully, completely green. Very bullish indication that we're rejecting that area. Now, that doesn't necessarily just give you a heads up that, okay, well, I'm just going to buy there. There are times where that doesn't work, as we can see back here on this candle here. This is a very bullish candle, but we knew that in context, we had a lot of bearishness happening here as well. So you don't just want to take the candlestick by itself. That's usually not a good way to get into a trade. But as an example, we had this bullish move higher, followed up with a little bit more indecision, right? We have another spinning top. We've got wick on the top, wick on the bottom. Yes, it had a bullish tendency to it, but really there wasn't a lot of direction there. It's just a non-trending bullish candle, followed up with a non-trending bearish candle. 
But to confirm this move higher here, this big bullish candle, look what happened after this non-trending bearish candle formed. We had another massive bullish candle to the upside. We triggered in the shorts here, and there was nothing but really a fake out. And then all of a sudden, we have this gigantic bullish candle to the upside, closes very near its highs with a lot of wick towards the lows. It's a, it's a bullish continuation candle. We know that's a trending candle to the upside, and we would expect price to react similarly so that it moves back to the upside again. So it follows along with that kind of idea. So use that when you're looking to get into trades. You want to be able to see those kinds of areas where, you know, maybe you're in a short trade and you're starting to see, you know, something like we have down here where it's not looking very good to the downside. Maybe you want to tighten your stop up a little bit or even consider taking a portion of your trade off. The market is giving you a huge heads up regardless of what the indicators say. Price action gives you pretty much everything you need in terms of just this style of trading where it's giving you a big heads up that you probably shouldn't be short, or if you are short, maybe not so heavy anymore. Uh, same with going to the upside when you hit these big areas in consolidation here. We can do the same thing that we did over here with this area as well. So really, we moved into this consolidation area, I mean, really right there, um, even the last burst up on this candle here. So as an example, we opened here. And then the candle that broke out of that consolidation and stuck is this candle right here. So we know that the close is down there. So we'll just match those up together. And now we have our body. So again, you can do the same thing. Just this one ended red because we opened higher than we closed. So we'll just fill this in with a little bit of red here. And now looking at the overall wicks on both sides, we have a wick at the bottom and a wick off of the highs all the way up here. And if we, zoom up, if we zoom out on this, we can see, just like we had before over here, a big heads up that even though, yes, this is an area of consolidation, we have a really big chance that we're most likely going to be falling out of this area rather than rising higher out of it. Just because of the way that if you add these all together, we can see that there's quite a bit of a bearish tone to this consolidation area. So it's just kind of a way that you can look and kind of, you know, give yourself more confirmation of an actual trade, regardless of the pattern that you're looking. Another way that we can blend candles together. But let me simplify it a little bit more for you. We can blend different adjacent candles to form a single candlestick. So that's the basic rule. We can blend different adjacent candles. That means any candle that is next to each other, as many as we want to form a single candlestick, thus summarizing the outcome over several periods in one candle. We can blend candles of similar frequency over any time frame. For example, minute by minute candles or hour by hour candles or day by day candles, you know, 15 minute by 15 minute candles. We can blend as many adjacent candles as we see fit. In effect, by doing this, one gets a clearer insight into the evolution of market activity over longer time periods. So why would we want to do this? First, for all blended candles creates a single stronger signal. Secondly, by blending candlesticks, one minimizes market noise, thereby getting a more accurate reflection of the underlying activity. Third, we can blend certain candles to see patterns, which normally wouldn't be visible. Finally, continually watching individual candles play out over short period time frames creates stress on us, okay. which can and frequently does result in premature stopping out or existing or exiting positions. This can result in loss or the less profit taking than originally targeted. So the importance of the last point cannot be understated. The psychological aspect reacting to short-term patterns plagues many investors. Analyzing groups of blended candles enables us to focus on our trading plan, thereby restraining the emotional reaction arising from adverse short-term markets. So let me show you in a step-by-step -step an easier way to do this without you know, that may give you a good starting point. Now, we're going to be using a presentation or a graphic that came from a class I actually attended. 
uh, because it was done better. And then let me explain to you what we're doing here. Okay, this is an example of candlestick math. Now, this animation doesn't belong to me. I got this off the, uh, uh, I recorded it off of uh, a course I was taking. and I, But I think it's a, an apt description. The, the uh, animation is much better than I can do. Anyway, um, the concept is the same. You see these two bars side by side. It's just showing you where the wicks are, where the bodies of the bars on these two separate bars are. In the first case, we have a bear bar. Second case, we have a slightly bullish bar, but when you add these two bars together, you can see that this bullish bar and this bear and this this bearish bar and this bullish bar winds up with a slightly bearish bar with a little bit of uh, body and these this much longer wick. Now, the reason that you add these two bars together is that you see this bar looks completely different, this single bar, from the two previous bars. So you took them individually. The idea is to try to ga gain perspective on a series of bars and to see whether or not markets are in balance or markets are trending. And if markets, if you take a, a bunch of bars and put them together, you, after practicing, you can see that these two bars, the bearish and the bullish bar together, winds up with a bar that is relatively neutral, maybe only slightly bearish. Okay, despite the fact that the previous bar was more of a bullish bar. So when you look at a series of bars side by side, you can make a better judgment, in my opinion, as far as determining whether or not these series of this bar or the series of bars are going to lend toward a, a give you some perspective on the context of the marketplace. Now, let me show you how it works uh, when you have a, another series of bars and, and add them up. The idea that I've got here is that this, let's say that you have a stop below here. This is your hard stop, and you, this is where your target is, which is the green line. And it's flagged as a valid entry. Now, once you get the entry, your bar goes up. You have a, a slightly uh, bullish bar, and things look pretty good. Uh, on the next bar, it's, it's bearish, so you're really back at your entry price. Uh, after a little while longer, you get another slightly bearish bar, or a bullish bar, I mean. Um, another bearish bar, this is a stronger bearish bar, and then subsequently a, a tiny little bar, which is a, another another slightly bearish bar with a small body. Look, looks like price is coming back a little bit. You're kind of getting moving back and forth. Another slightly bearish bar, another slightly bearish bar with a bit of a gap. And then you... And that's it. It's okay, well, I'm going to bail out. This is just too much, too much of a hassle. It's not going anywhere. I can get bail out. And then the next bar comes up, and it's a bearish bar. You get, pardon me, you get out here, and then the next bar goes to target. So the point is, is that you waited through most of it, and then just before it had the chance to get to target, despite the fact that your target and your stop was in pretty good shape, you bailed out prior to the that last bar going to target. You can see you waited through all of that other noise, uh, waited through it, and then got out at the inopportune time got it at the time just before it went to target. Despite the fact that your calculations, your uh, setup for the original trade was valid, so it wind up and it hit the target without you. So you got a break-even trade or maybe even a slight loss because of the fact that uh, you, got, you, you weren't confident in how you set this up in the first place. Using the same, you have to see the original entry, at, at, this is the original entry at close. You do some candlestick math from the candle after entry to, uh, to candle, from candle after entry to candle when the trade was exited. So you add all this together, you add all the bars to when the trade was exited, and you'll see that this is a bar that is just uh, really neutral. It, you, end, you exit it based on a, uh, this is the high, you take the low, you take the lowest part of the body, you take the highest part of the body, and you wind up with a doji. So things really didn't go anywhere. And all those bars, despite the fact that it whipsawed back and forth, prices didn't move. And if you were to exit on the second to last bar, you had exited on, in a situation where prices were just stuck. So if you move that back... If you add all those bars together, you end up with just a, uh, a a neutral bar, basically neutral bar. You would probably be more inclined to stay with that trade, particularly if you did the research on the rest of it and everything was fine. 
So that's uh, really the summation of, of why candlestick math can be helpful. Because if you move that, if you keep that in mind and you have that really nondescript candle uh, to add them all together, you can see that those 10 bars that were added together just equaled one bar, which was relatively neutral. All right, let me show you in a real world example from yesterday. Uh, in this case, I've got this box marked off, this this gold box, and it's marked off with, uh, it encompasses the 16 bars. And in these 16 bars from top to bottom, the Y value is 18 ticks from top to bottom. And as you can see, prices, a couple of bear bars, a couple of, of uh, bull bars, slightly moved down, moved back up, moved down. Now I got it right up to this end bar, and if we add all these bars together, using candlestick math from the previous uh, previous example I showed you, then you'd wind up with a bar that looks like this. Price has moved up, it's moved down, but when it's closed, it's closed right on this this level right here. The next two bars in this line, if we added these next two bars over, you could see that it closes on its high, it closes right on the high, over and above this, so this bar, it would look like this, a long taper with this. Now, if you're looking at these first 16 bars and you look at this particular uh, this particular bar and trying to determine whether to go long or short, this is, well, so it's, it's in green, but this bar here is just a doji. So you can see that the buyers and sellers are just in balance here. This bar, on the other hand, if you take this one by itself, you can see that prices had gone all the way down to this area, came all the way back up and closed on its high. So this is a, more of a bullish bar. And as you can see, that if you were to wait on this, this is, of course, they're both 18 ticks long. However, which bar would you be more inclined to go long with? Likewise, the reverse is true when it's short. So using candlestick math can help helps me get a, a little bit more clarity to the market, particularly when you're seeing prices go up on a, on a run. And in this case, uh, at this, uh, this juncture, if you look at it from the perspective of, off of this bottom, price has moved up to this area. Now, our price is going to continue up. And when you look at these bars in sequence, after a 21-minute period of time or 22 minutes, you can see that at the very end of this line, price has just moved up higher. And would it go to now? This isn't just the only way you would determine whether to go long on this particular bar. But if our target is up here in this area and you get a bar closing like this, it may give you more impetus to getting into that particular trade. At least that's the way I look at it. So in conclusion, in other words, a trader will see the patterns which could be more difficult to notice with the naked eye when we can blend candles. So it might just tell you, ah, we have lots of sideways movement, lots of indecision. Okay. Or it might tell you that we have the early beginnings of an up move or a down move. Okay, by taking all of this previous move and putting it together. So there's lots of ways that we can use candlesticks without knowing what a harami is and a doji is by just simply interpreting what the group of candles is trying to tell us. And by blending these, we can see or interpret market patterns. No different than when we use moving averages to take the noise out. We're using an indicator to tell you whether you know, a trend is continuing or a trend is reversing. This is just another way to help you interpret price action. And on that note, I'm going to say good night and thank you very much. And if you want more information or, or want some more guidance on blending candles, if you go to the Legacy FX Education Center, they have lots of information and they'll be glad to answer your questions and supply you like the chart you're seeing on your screen of all the different interpretations of those candles. So thank you very much and we'll talk to you again. Bye now.